Hi, everyone. This is Fran. Welcome back to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Fran and Angela. This is episode number 130130. Merry Christmas, you guys. We are in this beautiful season of Christmas and Advent. Today's guest is, um, she's just really going to encourage us. That's all I'm going to say about that. And she is going to challenge us in that encouragement to consider how we are serving the Lord. And don't let maybe the familiarity of this type of conversation turn you away, because I think you're going to love her story of how the Lord got her attention and what she is doing, um, who she's serving, um, and how she's making a difference in the kingdom. So anyway, we're always so thankful for you guys. We love you so much. Enjoy the show. All right, Angela Snyder, I'm super thankful and excited for this conversation. Hey, wait, can I back up and tell you a quick story? I would love that. I had a friend, a listener, Lori Boyd. Hello, Lori Boyd. She sent me the kindest text, and she said, Hey, I have listened to Sarah Roberts' episode twice. Loved it so much. But can I make a suggestion about the podcast? I haven't even told you this, Angela. And I was like, well, of course you can. Tell me what you're thinking. We love feedback. Mm -hmm. She said, instead of referring to what you're doing as an episode or a show, how about just a conversation? Because that's what y'all are doing. You're just having a conversation. And I was like, oh, "Oh, I love that. So I'm no longer going to say, Angela, whatever, whatever, episode in this show and what we're talking about and who our guest is who's joining the conversation today I think it feels a little softer kinder gentler I love that I do too so Lori Boy, thank you for the suggestion so Angela it's another conversation in the studio today and I love the fact that the time of year that we're recording this and we're talking about this we're really in the you know the heart of Christmas yes. and And I always think that I use this time of year, the whole month of December, to reflect on Jesus and and why he came and just the magnitude and the importance of his life and his death and his resurrection to me. And so this guest coming in today, I'm so super excited, and I've met her for the very first time a whole 20 minutes ago, but I'm already just hearing and knowing you guys are in for an encouraging conversation as we reflect on our Lord and Savior and who we are and what we're called to do and who we're called to be. So, Angela, thank you for introducing me to our beloved guest. Do you want to tell everybody who's joining the conversation today? I'm so excited to introduce my friend Chrissy Vandiver, Mm -hmm. who is with us. Um, And let me just say this, just to, to build on what you just said. I reconnected with Chrissy. She's one of those fun friends. You know those people, and there's a lot of them listening that that this applies to, where it's like you're together and you just have the most awesome conversation and you just encourage each other and you get so excited. And then a year goes by and then you're like, oh my goodness, there's my friend. And you just explode (laughs) in this fun conversation. Mm -hmm. And I don't even like talking on the phone. I think we talked for an hour the other night. And (laughs) I was like, Fran, she's got to come on the podcast and we just need to recap (laughs) parts of what this was because Chrissy Chrissy is the kind of person, then you'll hear this in just a minute, but she has got a heart for, and this is, this is what came out of that conversation the other night, the least of these. Mm. And that is, we are in December. We want to love God and love others and serve people well. And all of us can do it. We mm-hmm. just need the reminder of, hey, it's all around us. Yeah. So before we, we go into the, the deep dive with that, Chrissy, welcome, first of all. Thank you. To the conversation. I love being back with you and to meet Fran. Mm-hmm. I, and, and she's got the best hair in all the mm-hmm. world, you guys. <laughs> I, if you can just envision a precious face that just probably grins all the time. I feel like you smile in your sleep with all this thick, magnificent, curly, long, dark hair. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love it. It is a lot. 
<laughs> and it does nothing but this either. She is beautiful and one of those people that just radiates. Thank yes. you. You just Thank radiate. You. Um, I want people to know some fun things about you. You are a boy mom. I am a boy mom. I have a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, we They play sports, of course. We hunt and fish. Um, every memory my children have of hunting is with me. Um, uh, I pause talk- right there for just a minute. Like, this woman, like, is she in ain't playing. Stand. She yes. ain't playing, y'all. She's, mm-hmm. Yeah, I taught them both how to get a deer. I taught them both how to debone a deer. And oh we, gosh. we process them. And now my youngest fishes a lot. And I don't know as much about fishing, but he watches YouTube constantly on mm. fishing. I mean, we are, mm. we are pure boy mama mm-hmm. at my we're boys at my house that's mm-hmm. it even the toilets go to prove it so <laughs> <laughs> i love it yes and y'all live in we live in, in crockett mm-hmm. county we're in alamo mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. shout out to crockett love it county. love yeah. crockett yep. yeah so well, okay. and i'm jea mm-hmm. i work at jea i've been there almost 25 years now which is Okay, for people that are not local, oh, yeah. JEA, ja- Jackson Energy Authority, what is, what is JEA? That's our local utility company. Mm-hmm. It's electric, gas, water, wastewater, mm-hmm. and telecom. So, What do you do there? I am. I actually have a master's degree from here at Union in accounting, but I'm in human resources mm-hmm. there. I was God in accounting for about 14 years, and I've been in human resources the rest of the time. But, but here's the deal, y'all. I promise we're not talking about human resources today. No. <laughs> no, we're not. This is not a podcast for <laughs> no. HR. It's not. Is it fun to be back on? on campus at Union University? It is. I do love it here. Um, But I kind of rushed through my time here. Um, I graduated in three years the first time and then came back at night uh, to get my master's. So I really never got the college experience. That's a big deal for me, for my boys. I want them to go somewhere and really get the college experience. I had to get out. I had Mm. to get done and Mm -hmm. get into real life. Listen, we had deer to kill and gut and do all the things. We got to move (laughs) on, people. I didn't know what I wanted then, obviously. Listen, we're just glad that you're here today. And so, I don't know, Angela, guide us, help us. What are Mm -hmm. we doing? What are we talking about? I want Chrissy just to share in broad strokes, and then we'll get more specific. But, But what is just the overriding message on your heart um when it comes because you you talk to women you do well let's talk about the ministry that you're passionate about let's start right Right. there what ministry are you involved in and why does that matter to you right um about a year and a half ago i started going to the crockett county jail um once a week i go on tuesday nights and um i get the opportunity to sit and talk with all the ladies there for about an hour sometimes more Um, It was the most terrifying thing I ever did, but it was one of those things that God put so heavily on my heart that he physically told me I had to go there. We have got to talk about this story okay? because I have been in, and and I told you it sounded like Jonah. I'm glad Mm -hmm. you didn't get swallowed Mm -hmm. by a whale. I know, (laughs) me too. And I've been in similar situations where it was like, what does the Lord have to do to get our attention? Right, and he will do Mm -hmm. what he has to do. So talk about that for a minute. Well, it... Um, about 10 years ago, I went and visited a young man at the jail. And when I went into the center pod, I saw the women's pod and it laid so heavy on me to go tell them my story because I wanted to just go tell them it's okay. You're going to be okay. God still loves you. Don't carry all that shame because I mean, it was all piled up on me because those were the things I had suffered with. I never went to jail. I should have gone to jail so many times, but I I didn't. But I just wanted to tell them that. But I was so busy. I had young children. I had a full-time job. I had so much. And when I left that day, I tried to never think about it again. Mm -hmm. God would kind of drop it in every now and then, but I'd try to, you know, I I had had so many excuses. But I also knew that I had the talent, not the talent, but the ability to go in there and tell them something that would encourage them because if somebody would have just told me um, it could have saved me years of grief but um, anyway I last year served on my fifth Emmaus team those who don't know that's a great spiritual weekend walk and I love the Emmaus community but um, during that weekend God put it on my heart again like a lot Um, there were some people talking about different things they could do to serve and I just kept thinking, no, no, you know, because I had new excuses now because it's 10 years later. And I was on my way home. I was telling Angela I was on my way home from work that next Monday. So I'd been on this spiritual weekend, spiritual high, and um, 
my car, which has never messed up ever, I was driving home and I drive in front of that jail every day and I kind of ignore it every day. And I got in front of the jail that Monday night, it's about 530 and my car stalled, like almost stopped in the middle of the road. Mm. It has never done it before. It has never done it since. Mm. And I looked up and I said, okay, all right, God, I, I hear you. Mm. And So I called the sheriff right then because I thought, if I don't do it now, I'm going to come up with 10 other reasons why I can't. And I knew him, so I called him, and I was really praying he didn't answer the phone, but he did. And I was really hoping he was going to tell me somebody was already ministering to these women, and they weren't. And he said, and you know what, Chrissy, you'd be perfect for that. Mm. And I said, okay. I said, well, when do I start? And he said, well tomorrow night and I almost threw up. I was like, okay. <laughs> so anyway, I went in there that first night and um, and I knew it's what I was supposed to do. I knew what I was going to do. I was just going to tell them my story. And um, this, they just put me in there and, and really with no guidance and I was scared to death. I've never been scared to talk to people, never. And I'll, I mean, I will shout about my, about God's grace from top of the hills, but I didn't know how I was going to be perceived. Mm-hmm. And that's scary. Because mm-hmm. when the first thing that was said to me when I walked in, this lady said, so what church you with? Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm not with the church. She said, oh, then what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And I said, I just want to tell you a story. And um, there were eight women there that night and they came out and they sat down and I just told them, I just told them a story. And I didn't really, I didn't really talk a lot about the Bible. I didn't talk a lot about scripture. I just said, you know, that there's a, there's a God who is real and he saved my life. And I'd like to come back next week and tell you more about it. And, and it was good. I mean, it was uncomfortable for all of us, but now when I walk in that door, they are standing at the door Mm -hmm. about knock me down to give me a hug. They look forward. We, I have, miss a night every now and then they're calling me on the phones everything okay are you gonna be okay you know so I mean they are genuinely they're wonderful people who've just made bad decisions Mm -hmm. just like the rest of us Mm -hmm. and I have I love them Mm -hmm. like they're friends of mine Mm -hmm. and I'm proud to say that I'm proud well and you know Angela and I both believe and you do too and we say this over and over and over again that every single person on this planet wants to be seen And they want to be valued. Absolutely. They want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And we all want to be poured into. Mm -hmm. Whether we would agree with that in the moment or not, to the core of who we are as people. Absolutely. That's what we all are made for. We long for that. And regardless of what you've done or what's been done to you, you still need to be, should be seen and valued and heard and appreciated and poured into and loved. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, shown and talk about who, who God is. Mm-hmm. And again, I say this a lot because I think where people get stuck is that logically we would all, as a believer, we would agree with that. But it's the, well, how am I doing that? Mm -hmm. Like just in the day to day, because Mm -hmm. you get stuck in, I've got to go to work every day and I've got all these responsibilities. And it's like, you know what? You can go to jail ministry and you can do that, but it's also at your work. It's also in your home. It's also with all the places that you go. Mm -hmm. How are we seeing, valuing, pouring into, hearing people Mm -hmm. well in that moment? And the fact that, you know, you... You knew that. You absolutely knew that. But you were wrestling that out with the Lord. And just even like I love and appreciate how quick you went from the wrestling to the yes. Yes. Like you just knew this is what I'm supposed to do. And I think I love that more than anything. This is what I'm supposed to do. Absolutely. And, you know, one of my favorite sayings is, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy, Mm -hmm. distracted, Mm -hmm. disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I'm... I don't worry that I'm going to go out and kill anybody, right? you know, but I do worry that I get too busy sure. to do what God may lay right in front of me sure. or too distracted. You know, these, these cute little phones that we have, I think are huge distractions mm-hmm. in our lives mm-hmm. now that keep us, they can be used for great things, but you know, I've, I've, I've told my children the other day, I wish they knew life 
without mm-hmm. screens. Mm-hmm. I really do. Mm-hmm. The only screen we had growing up was on a console TV. That's you know? right. A piece of furniture. And, yes, you had to walk across piece. the room to change Absolutely. the channel unless you had a younger mm-hmm. sibling. That's mm-hmm. right, because the youngest one had to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and that's... Um, you know, I, and I, I tell my boys this, too, all the time, and my oldest is really starting to get it, that there are children, young men that he's around, that nobody's ever kind to them. Mm-hmm. So they don't know how to be kind to anybody else. And just a, just kindness to them can mm-hmm. mean the world. Mm-hmm. That is sometimes how we show Christ. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be quoting Scripture. No, right. It right. can just be kindness. Showing up for people, yes. just being there for people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, again, in the busyness of life, you're just walking past people all day long or you're, you know, giving instructions. Hey, I need you to do this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hang on a minute. Yes, I want you to do those things and I want you to be kind in how you do it. Mm-hmm. But maybe we are all ready needing to move to level two of just taking it to another step of, all right, Lord, what do you want me to actually do outside of the norm? Because I just think, man, if we were all, if we were all living that kind of life where we were pouring in and seeing the least of these Mm -hmm. or just seeing the person beside us, what a difference we could yes. be making in this world and in our own communities. Absolutely. At work, I get the unique privilege. I have a couch in my office because they Are say you the that therapist? I'm the count- Yes. Mm-hmm. I, that, uh, they said I need to get a counseling degree. But <laughs> um, but if I start hearing, and I, I get, you know, I've got a great relationship with every, all 350 employees there. And when I start hearing about one person being negative, being down, you know, I'll call them. I'll say, you know, come to my office. Mm. And I am shut the door and... Like, how's how's it going? And when I get a fine, I'm going to ask again. How mm-hmm. how's it going? Mm-hmm. What's Especially going on with the man? Yes, because they don't like to talk about feelings, mm-hmm. and I love to talk about feelings. Mm-hmm. How do you so, make them talk? What's the secret? So I start sharing my story. Um, I will, you know, and I think most most all of them know now. I'm not going to judge anything you've got to say. There is nothing you can tell me that's going to shock me. Nothing. Um, Probably not much that I haven't done. And, you know, I just want them to be honest. Most of them I already know. I can tell when they walk in the door. I can usually tell either we're going through a divorce, um, an affair. um, And and they're, I just make them tell me. Because sometimes it just feels better to say it out loud, Mm -hmm. you know. And it's easier to keep it in. Yeah. Yeah, but it sure does feel better to say something. Mm-hmm. And then to let them say it and you not look shocked or judge mm-hmm. and just say, you know what? Jesus knew you were going to do that. Mm-hmm. And he, he died for you anyway. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're going to put our focus. And it's, it's wild because it takes jail. It takes that mm-hmm. for you to, like, we can hide. We're not in jail. Mm-hmm. I get to hide mm-hmm. my imperfections, mm-hmm. my sin. Mm-hmm. You know, I can hide behind that very well. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, when you find yourself in jail, yeah. well, you're confronting it. Right. You are looking at it. And everybody gets to do it with you. That's then. right. It is a totally different ball game. And not that I want us to all go to jail. I know. But just the, the, the space, mm-hmm. you're creating a space mm-hmm. For people to be honest mm-hmm. and transparent and vulnerable with mm-hmm. you as they talk about their sin. And they sin. do open up so much now. You know, those first few weeks, it was, they were feeling me out. Oh, sure. But now, I mean, some of the things, and there's a lady that goes with me most nights now, and she's wonderful. I've made a new best friend in the middle of life with her. But, um, you know, that when we left the other night, she was like, whew. Sometimes it's a lot. I said, yeah, sometimes it is a lot. But I love that they'll just say it. They'll just say, we Mm -hmm. talked about holding grudges the other night and how bitterness can take root Mm -hmm. in your heart and it Mm -hmm. can just change who you are. And that, you you know, that's many of the things in there is they are so angry at somebody from their past, from their current situation, that they just feel so wronged that they feel like they were right for whatever they did. Yeah. And, you know, the thing we talked about the other night is if you could if you could get them back and some of them have gotten them back. How how did it work out for you? Did that Mm -hmm. make you feel better? Mm -hmm. And none of them said yes, Mm -hmm. because it doesn't because your heart, you still have that heart problem that you didn't 
Right. You didn't forgive it. Right. So um, we've. I've got a great, um, I should have brought it with me, but it's that story of the guy that walks into the room with all the file cabinets on the wall and he starts opening, like each file cabinet has a name on it, like um, movies I've watched, um, lustful thoughts I've had. And he opens it and he starts reading them and it just mm. goes on and on and he's trying to, you know, and, and he, then he tries to destroy them and he can't because the, they're made of this material that can't be destroyed and he's so embarrassed he's like I've got to find a way to lock this door and all of a sudden he hears something he turns around and and there stands Jesus and he's like no anybody but him Mm. and he goes and opens those drawers and he starts pulling those cards out and he's like no just don't please don't look at those Mm -hmm. and he starts signing you know every one of these is handwritten by this guy his memories and they're signed by him and Jesus starts signing his name over those Mm. Mm. and and he's like no don't don't do that you know and he said you know Jesus looked at me with the saddest eyes but then he came over and he just hugged me and he carried me out of the room but he didn't lock the door Mm. because he knew there were more memories to be Mm. made Mm. and I'm like those things you know, he didn't come for the people who pretend to have it all together. Mm-hmm. Thank Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because that's what I grew up thinking. Mm-hmm. That he that he came for the people who, when they get it together, mm-hmm. that that's what he's there for. Mm-hmm. And one time I heard somebody, and I think I had that quote that, um, oh, that's my favorite, Lisa. But I read one time that I'm allowed to be both a work in progress and to help other people grow at the same time. And I refuse to wait until I believe I'm perfect Mm -hmm. or that someone else has deemed me worthy of helping other people. Mm -hmm. And I love that Mm -hmm. because you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've never learned a thing from a perfect person. Right. Not one thing. Outside of Jesus himself. Outside of him. That's Mm -hmm. right. On planet Earth, it's Mm -hmm. never going to happen. It's not. Mm -hmm. And, And people who pretend... To have it all together, the the Facebook mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. I can't, you know, I love people who put all their messy stuff on mm-hmm. Facebook and just mm-hmm. own it. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mm-hmm. can see that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with that. And that's what I was thinking too about, you know, I've never been a part of jail ministry, but hearing you talk about it and I've heard Fran talk about it and there's just a refreshing honesty Mm -hmm. to, hey, you know, there's no point in pretending Mm -hmm. here. No. Let's just have the conversation Mm -hmm. because they're not sitting around trying to pretend there's something they're not. No. And that's just, you can work with that. Mm -hmm. And, and none of them feel, they feel so labeled as prisoners Mm -hmm. that They don't feel beautiful Mm. or worthy or in any way able to be used by God. And so that's one of the things that I make them say, and we'll just say it together. I'm beautiful. I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm still able to be used by God. Mm. Because I'm a testimony to the things that you tell yourself you are is what you become. Mm-hmm. Those thoughts become who you are. Mm-hmm. How do they react to that when you have them do that? So, is it awkward? Um, the first time it was awkward because they, you know, I, t- I asked them, I said, how many of you have looked in the mirror lately and said, wow, I look good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and they all laughed. And I said, but honestly, you know, God created you mm-hmm. just like you are. You're perfect in his eyes. And so by not feeling that, to me, we're, we're not, We're not being who we're supposed to be. Now, do I feel like I'm gorgeous every day? No, no. But I can look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for making me who I am. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, um, you know, my my ability to do whatever. And I I told them, I said, your gifts are different than my gifts. But I want them to know they're there for a reason. I said, your testimony when you get out of here can be so much better than mine. And that's what I need y'all to be focusing on is what am I, what am I going to learn from this? And what am I going to go forward? You know, I had a girl come back in the other day. Mm -hmm. She came out, she had gotten out, made the same mistakes. I knew she was there before I got in there and she met me at the door with tears in her eyes. And she said, I messed up again. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know what? You're lucky. We serve the God of agains. Mm -hmm. And I said, he is not upset with you. And she said, I quit reading my Bible, and I just, I messed up. And she said, I know. I, and I said, my mama always said, it's only a mistake if you don't learn something from it. Mm-hmm. I said, so you you messed up. You learned something. Move forward. We're going to go forward. And I said, and and 
you were done with that. Mm -hmm. That was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I tell them every day, today's the first day of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. Mm -hmm. So it took me a long time to get there. It took me a long time to lay down shame. That's Mm -hmm. where the devil can drag Mm -hmm. me down. And Mm -hmm. still I can see some things from my Mm -hmm. past or, and and have that brought up. We, we think somehow in our belief system, whether it was told to us or the world tells us directly, indirectly, we have believed that our worth is based on a performance right. of some kind. Right. And when the performance is not what it's supposed to be, then we we believe that we're less than, that we're not valued, that mm-hmm. for some reason we're not as good mm-hmm. Absolutely. as we should be. And I told a 19-year-old student last night, they were talking about how you know, we're going, you know, to to repent of your sin, to not go back to your sin. And I said, listen, yes, we want to repent of our sin every day. Mm-hmm. We, we've got to recognize and look at the, at the day mm-hmm. and say, okay, Lord, this is, this is where I'm struggling. This is a sin for me. Mm-hmm. And, but to think that you're going to overcome sin. Yeah is never going to occur because I can tell you that your sin, whether you're in jail or you're a 19 year old college student or whoever you are, you're still going to sin. It's just that I'm exchanging that sin for another sin. Absolutely. It's never going to not be there. However, what I do know is that I have the grace and I have the forgiveness and the God of agains Mm -hmm. who, who acknowledges that he knew that Mm -hmm. he still knows that he's Mm -hmm. not expecting us to get it all together. That's right. It will never, ever happen. So whether you're the precious soul in jail or you're the 19 year old or the 32 year old Mm -hmm. or the 72 year old or the 102 year old, if we can't get our minds wrapped around a belief based on what Scripture says, who we are, then we're going to always struggle mm-hmm. to utter the words, I'm beautiful, I'm mm-hmm. valuable, I'm worthy, I have a purpose, mm-hmm. and I can be used for the kingdom of God. Yes. It's just in us, but I understand. I've never been in jail, mm-hmm. but I got my own messed up Absolutely. stuff. I got my own jacked up sin that I've got to sort through. But it doesn't change our identity, right? It just does not change our identity. And you just wish we could like get that and have. And I'm just so thankful that you show up week after week and just remind them and pour that into them because that's where their belief system will begin to change. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, a lot of them, and not just them, the people I encounter at work have been so burned by religion. Mm-hmm. And um, the you have to do this, mm-hmm. this, this, and this. You know, you got to check mark these boxes. And that's not what it's about at all. Mm-mm. And I grew up kind of believe in the same thing you you can't you can't dance you can't drink you can't cuss you Mm. can't you can't you can't I'm out I know (laughs) listen (laughs) well and that you know that's one of the things with the girls I tell them I said talk to me like y'all talk to each other I don't want you to 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 try to sugar I don't want Sunday school answers in Mm -hmm. here and and the same thing at work and I tell the all the new guys coming in I'm like I will pray with you I will cuss with you whatever you need to feel comfortable so that you can tell me what's wrong we'll do it and but those things are important to let people know that it's just about this amazing man that God sent that took on all of your sins. You know, that is it the Mercy Me song that says, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin on the mm-hmm, cross. Mm-hmm. That grabs me in the gut mm-hmm, every time. Because mm-hmm. can you imagine standing there mm. and your name on Jesus' mind and him knowing <laughs> everything I know about me? And he did it anyway. The literal weight of the entire Wor- sinful yeah. world, yeah. past, present, and to come. Yes, he took that to the cross. Yes. And we are just kind of. Yeah. Mm. I know. Like we don't believe that. I know. And that's, I think that's the the hardest thing. It's, it's so, it's hard to fathom. Mm-hmm. It is. In a world of selfishness and me mm-hmm. and, and I'm looking out for myself. It is really hard to wrap your hands around that 
somebody knew all those things mm-hmm. about you and the things that you're still going to do mm-hmm. and loved you anyway. Mm-hmm. He didn't love you because of who you were. He loved right. you because of who he is. And right. that to me is just game changer. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Okay. Um, let's, and I don't have my notes in front of me, but I feel like we're, we all are confident in talking about this. Um, so this, this hearing you talk about all of this is just a tremendous source of, even for myself, for everybody, Angela, to be encouraged to consider our story, Mm -hmm. understand our story, get healing through our story, so that we can, in a healthy way, give back and serve. Yes. I know that not everybody's called to jail ministry. No, they're not. Even though part of me, I would have said like, no, 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 y'all all all are. Do you hear me? We're all going. (laughs) But it's so fun, like with Chrissy, when when you know God has created us, each of us on purpose mm-hmm. for something, mm-hmm. it is very clear how he's gifted you in ways. Everybody listening, whether you believe it or not, mm-hmm. he has gifted you uniquely mm-hmm. in a way that you can serve him and bring him glory. Absolutely. And when your gifts and your passions, whatever puts a fire in your belly, you know, collides with what you were created and how you were created and where you're gifted. When that passion and those gifts come together, Mm -hmm. that's where your ministry is. Absolutely. So what, what do you say to these women that are like, well, I've kind of had this stirring in the back of my my heart. My car hasn't broken down in front of the place yet. I don't think it has to be a broken down car, but I do think, I think people fear they don't know enough about the Bible. They don't know enough history. They don't, you know, when, just tell your story. Mm-hmm. Where has God shown up in your life? Mm-hmm. Because I know God is real. I know that. And there is a greatness in knowing that you know. But I didn't know that my whole life. Right. I grew, I was baptized young like every good Baptist was. And I was rededicated in my teenage years just like every good Baptist was. And, you know, but I never really got it. Because to me, God's love was contingent on how I lived my life. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until my child was born and I looked into his eyes and wept because I finally understood that it didn't have a thing to do with Mm me at all. And, um, you know, I've told this story so many times. My mom was in the room, my husband was in the room, and two nurses and a doctor. And when I looked in his eyes, I physically saw the eyes of God Mm. and I heard him say and I because I asked mama later I said did you hear that Mm. she was like what (laughs) and I said God said this is how much I love you Mm. and all that that you've been listening to that wasn't me and I'm telling you that was my road to Emmaus Mm -hmm. fall down on your knees Mm -hmm. go blind get your sight that was it for me and changed my that changed the trajectory of my life Mm -hmm. and I mean that I I finally understood grace that's what I understood but that goes Mm -hmm. back to we have to know we have a story you don't even have to understand your story just recognize I've got one Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people just don't know their story right and I tell students all the time your story's being written every single Mm -hmm. day you don't just wake up one day and go oh there's my story Mm -hmm. like it's being written Mm -hmm. every day our story's being written Mm -hmm. and we're probably walking around a little oblivious to it Mm -hmm. and not recognizing how God is orchestrating and putting people in situations good and bad Mm -hmm. together so I think it's worth people in this season to just sit back and be curious yeah. and wonder, hmm, do I know my story? Because again, like you said, it's not like we've got to like have 12 things figured out, pass a test, and then you can go serve. That's right. Like it's just go, yes. just go and serve wherever is a need in front of you. And sometimes it's obvious. And then sometimes you stumble your way through it and you That's go right. there and you serve there and you do that. And then the path maybe becomes a little bit straighter, but it's not just going to magically, you know, land in your lap that's right and I think that's why you've got to also know that there's a God that loves you too to go along with your story because I've got a really good friend uh, who was raped and that's part of her story but she can go back and see where God provided during that now Mm -hmm. I mean of course it was awful at the time but now she has reached so many 
young girls who ended up in about the same situation. Mm -hmm. And that's why I I love when I see something, not that I love for tragic things to happen Mm -hmm. to people, but when I see it and it's strong women who I know, I'm like, man. God's fixing to use them for something. Mm -hmm. He is fixing to use them. Yes. And that's what I tell the girls all the time. I'm like, he is building you up to be, man, you know, they can reach people. I'll never get to see. I'll never get the opportunity to Mm -hmm. talk to. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's so powerful. You know, when I see a woman that's lost a child, I can't imagine. Like to me, that's, and I've begged God to not let that be my story. But if it is, so be it. Right. And, like, I didn't know I could ever get to a point where I could trust like that. Now, I didn't get to that overnight. That That's a – I'm digging into that all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think when when people see people survive that, when they walk out of that fire, mm-hmm. you're like, wow, mm-hmm. that's – that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And some of the, you know, strongest women I know have been through things that make my story look like yeah. a piece of cake. Yeah. What a gift. Yeah. Yeah. But, and also in 45 years, I know there's nothing that I'm not going to survive. Right. To. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and that's trying to get that across to somebody who doesn't understand God's grace. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Mm-hmm. Except to just keep telling them where mm-hmm. it showed up, where God showed up in your life, where his grace showed up in your Again, life. Again, reflect on your story yes. so that you can see. Yes. You're you're building a, a faith. You're strengthening your faith with each day, mm-hmm. with each event, with mm-hmm. every encounter. You're building up your faith so mm-hmm. that when a bigger crisis occurs you like I've got something to pull from yeah and you get to reflect on that and go oh yeah even in that horrific Mm -hmm. moment Mm -hmm. the Lord was there he Mm -hmm. saw and he knew Mm -hmm. this is horrific in this moment but I will redeem it yes and so just to sit and recognize that you know what he is good Mm -hmm. he is always good whether you have a crime against you we've all listen that's all sin is like we're all we're all convicted yeah Mm -hmm. you know that's all of us but I just I don't I want people to hear this and and be encouraged but also really give it to the Lord and ask the Lord where do you want to use me how do you want to use me because again I can go serve in whatever ministry but it may be like hmm that was good, and I'm glad I did it, but it wasn't like my passion, mm-hmm. my story. Mm-hmm. And and that's good, and it's needed over there, but it's okay to to be patient and let the Lord develop that and evolve that, because serving is always good, but mm-hmm. it sure is good when you get to take your story mm-hmm. and go do the thing with the Lord and, and give back, and that's just beautiful. I love it so much. It kind of makes it worth it. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh, for sure. The, it makes the pain worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. The the struggle and the it just makes it worth it mm. because it they I understand them right. I understand their bad decisions. I under right. you know every time that I get in there and and we we'll, we always give them a few minutes to if it's somebody new to talk about why they're there and. Um, and they always have a, by the time they get done explaining, I'm like, yeah, maybe that was okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, they're yeah. They're persuasive. Yeah. yeah. They're very persuasive. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, several of them are, they're there for a long time and they've just kind of settled into it. And, and, but they love being encouraged. Mm-hmm. And most of the time they cry because their, their stories are so broken and they hear hope mm-hmm. and everybody wants mm-hmm. hope. Mm-hmm. And they hear peace, and everybody wants peace. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to be miserable. Right. Nobody wakes up every day and says, "Whoa, I hope I'm miserable today." Yeah, you know? right. I, I've printed off for them. Um, this is the day the Lord's made. That's one thing I start my morning. I've got it taped on my mirror at home. This is the day the Lord's made for you, Chrissy. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I say that out loud every morning because I do believe that Scripture is a weapon mm-hmm. against Satan. Mm-hmm. And I tell them, I, I tell them, I, t- I tell everybody I can, if you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. That's right. And it's so true mm-hmm. because demons flee mm-hmm. and they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and, and that's what I tell those girls, especially in there. You know, I think about being in the jail like 
during COVID when I got trapped in my house with my children. And I love my children, but I didn't like them that much mm-hmm. during that time because mm-hmm. we were together. <laughs> too much together. Way too much. And they're all together in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And, and it does, you can sometimes feel the hostility between them and I mean some of them are living together day and night for months on end and you know it's always a pleasure for me to be able to walk back out and they don't get to walk back out Mm -hmm. so we even try to talk about those things you Mm -hmm. know what's why is she getting on your nerves you know we gotta let that go too because little you know the devil can use those little things absolutely to tear that's what tears marriages apart right it's somebody who pumped from the middle of the yeah. toothpaste tube mm-hmm. and the other one wanted to pump from the bottom right. and it goes from there to mm-hmm. you know we can't forgive that so we're not going to forgive something else mm-hmm. and everybody quit working mm-hmm. on it well so. we're all agents of hope mm-hmm. as a believer we should all be those people this is just a real i think this is just a sweet sweet conversation and yes an encouragement but just also a time for us all in this Christmas season to be so thankful Mm -hmm. that God in his kindness, tremendous kindness, we can never get our minds wrapped around, gave us his son so that we could have this life that we could never have apart from him. And it's absolutely beautiful. I appreciate who you are. I appreciate how you serve every single week. I appreciate what you are doing for the kingdom, just showing up and loving these sweet souls Mm -hmm. and giving them hope. Everything that we can do is is life-giving and making a difference in this world, and we all need to be doing that. And I'm challenging us all Mm -hmm. to do something different that is outside of our natural own ability. Apart from him, we can do nothing. I'll tell you what. We can do a lot of things on our own that are really, really good. Mm -hmm. We can. We do it all the time. Absolutely. But we want to be people that trust the Lord enough, believe in Him enough to step out and ask Him to do the supernatural through us because I'd rather not. (laughs) Yeah. I'd rather not. That's comfortable and safe. Right. Um, So we do want to, we want to encourage everybody to step out and do the hard thing. I say it all the time. We can do hard things, Angela Snyder. Mm -hmm. What if every time we saw a Christmas gift, we thought, okay, Lord, show me my gifts and how I can use them for Mm -hmm. you. That can be our little Christmas challenge. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I say yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and my thing too, and this is, I'll end with this, but, um, you know, I ask people all the time, do each day you feel love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Do you feel that every day? Or is it bitterness, anxiety, worry? Because those things can't exist in your heart together. And, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us all those things. And if we're not living in that, then we can't be the vessel that mm-hmm. we need to be. Mm-hmm. If you're not living and feel joy-filled, mm-hmm. you can't go show joy to other people. Mm-hmm. So that's a... That's a place we have to mm-hmm. examine ourselves, mm-hmm. our own hearts, and work on that. And because to me, if, if you're filled with the joy of Jesus, you can't contain right. it. Mm-hmm. You need to tell somebody mm-hmm. else about it mm-hmm. and about that grace. So. We're not the fruit makers. No, we are not. We're, we're just not the fruity. Fruit. We're just, yeah, <laughs> we're fruity, but we cannot be the, we don't manufacture that kind of fruit. No. And it's only going to come from. But the, the world Lord will. Oh, rape sure. you of it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, go go be that and do mm-hmm. that and in your mm-hmm. own human strength, mm-hmm. come up with it. But, mm-hmm. okay, everybody, law, listen, we have been challenged and encouraged mm-hmm. all in one conversation. Angela and Chrissy, thank you for being with us. Absolutely. It was a joy. Mm. I w- you're going to see her sweet little face because mm-hmm. there's going to be a picture and you're going to be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love her. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you always for listening to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Fran, Angela, and Chrissy. Y'all have a wonderful day. We love you so much. Well, another great conversation in the books. I love Chrissy Vandiver and who she is and what she's doing. You do too. I know you do. All right, everybody. You know that we record all of these fabulous conversations in the library here on campus at Union University. We'd love to have you come for a visit. Do you have a high school age student? 
do you know of someone that needs to come for a campus visit? We would love to have them. You can do that by scheduling that through the website uu.edu and just search campus visits. Also, maybe you're ready to apply and you're just getting caught up in this season where everyone is busy. But you know what? We've got a fee waiver code for you because we do not want you paying that application fee. Just type in the word TALK, all capital letters, T-A-L-K, and therefore you do not have to pay the application fee. All right, everybody, enjoy your week. Merry Christmas. We love you guys so much.